So where are we with FS2020? I haven't been doing too much but I've bitten the bullet and bought myself spad.next. Uh, the reason I've done that is I discovered that that was a, a way that you could program the GPS and the autopilot. Uh, a number of, I mentioned this briefly, that there were some workarounds for the gaps in the SDK. There's a bunch of different people have made ways around that. I mentioned Moby Flight in a previous video. That's an option. In fact, another thing I've discovered is if you have Moby Flight installed, even though you don't use it, um, one of the modules it installs is available to FSU IPC. If you have FSU IPC for FS2020, it can use the Moby Flight module to give access to the functions for the GNS 530 and the autopilot and a bunch of other things. Uh, so that's a second way to do it. And of course, spad.next. Now you need the spad.next beta version, you, which I think means you can't use the trial version and see if, well, I mean, I was going to say see if the GPS functions work. I mean, they do work. <laughs> so to see if you like them, <laughs> I suppose. You can't do that. So, um, but if you install the spad.next, there is a, you have to install a separate thing, which is the LVAR bridge, it's called, that comes with the distribution. And, uh, and then you just get a bunch of things available as functions you can map, and there's a bunch of LVARs as well. So that's great, and I've set up my... I'm still flying the Cessna 172 for now, just because, you know, it's, some, it's a familiar aircraft. Uh, it's a stopgap, you know, I'm just doing this to exercise the functions of FS2020 until such times as we get a, a good aircraft to fly and uh, we, we are due the Twin Otter Extended well it's probably not called the T Twin Otter Extended we don't know what it's called going to be called yet but um, word is that's probably going to be released by the summer which means it'll be going into beta pretty soon uh, we're in April 2021 now and of course I'm fairly sure I'll be on that beta program so I'm looking forward to that but for now we're flying the Cessna 172 so I've managed to hook up the all the functions of the GNS 530 all the functions of the autopilot in the Cessna 172 which is which includes the vertical speed modes in fact so those functions are also added by the beta version of the of spad.next as are, as I think are functions for the Garmin G1000 might be wrong about that but uh, so I've set the autopilot up using my twin otter autopilot panel I have I have got the um, honeycomb bravo panel of, of course but I've yet to do the engineering that's required to properly integrate this into my panel and I'm not I'm not going to do that yet because I want to just see where we land up with the twin otter FS2020 and cockpits in general you know I might pull this cockpit apart and do something a little bit less ambitious at the end of the day so for now we're using the a twin otter autopilot panel, input only, we don't have any of the outputs going. Um, again, that's all at the moment reliance on air manager. But it's great, we can fly around with the GPS, with the autopilot. Now I'll just say something about the GPS. <laughs> Although I've managed to get my entire GPS panel working using spad.next, next thing I discovered was that the GNS530 implementation in FS2020 is crap, basically. Uh, didn't take you long to find that out if you go and <laughs> look for information. Um, it's buggy, it's got a whole bunch of functions missing. Okay, it's not the Reality XP version, but um, but even the functions that are supplied don't work properly. But, uh, so that was very disappointing, but there is a free mod by some, I don't know the guy's real name, Pymark, he goes as Pymark on some of the forums at least, and that's a free mod, you can download it, uh, just Google FS2020 GNS530 mod. It's an easy install and um, not only does it restore some of the proper functionality to the GNS530, it adds a bunch of other things. It adds things like uh, where you can get METARs. I mean that's obviously an add-on function to the GNS530, that's not a real world function. But anyway, it changes some of the map screens, gives you a terrain mapping functionality, gives you traffic collision avoidance system Again, that's an add-on to the genuine GNS 530. What else does it give you? It gives you weather radar, another add-on. 
um, which is fantastic, you know, well, it looks fantastic anyway. Just many other things, it clears up the display, the fonts are rationalised, fixes a few bugs, so well worth a download. And, uh, you know, once we got that up and running, we're at critical mass really. Okay, we still only got one screen, but um, we can fly. And we can fly without having to use the mouse in the cockpit, which is a real, you know, that's a real drag factor. So we're going to hop in, take a little uh, little test flight, and uh, we'll just see some of this in action to round this off. So we're just going for a little test flight. We're in the Cessna 172. We're at Red Cliff, Y-R-E-D, I think. This is on the Queensland Sunshine Coast in Australia. This is harking back really to the, this trip to the the early days of Orbix and Aussie X. This is a free strip from uh, is it yes Pushback Studios, and it's great. It's brilliant. Uh, it's not quite an Aussie X strip really. It's a it's a hard strip. Uh, so we'll see a little bit of this on the climb out. I just want to show you the briefly the GPS operating all of this from the hardware don't forget and it's the enhanced GPS mod and we're just going to do a quick flight up the coast to Kabulcha or Kabulcha I'm not sure how you say that which is a payware strip from Pushback and I uh, bought that because it looks like a really nice strip but uh, let's just take off for now we've got that uh, as a direct to we're taking off more or less on course. Let's just do it. It's mid afternoon or I'm getting towards evening. I've just been tweaking my rudder pedals and uh, they're a little bit twitchy at the minute. I've only just set them up with Spad on next. That's why I'm weaving here. <laughs> Actually I've just set uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, just taking a look out the, uh, actually cause we're going to fly straight away, but let's just do a quick orbit of Red, red Cliff so we can get a look at it. So there's the strip below, kind of nice looking. So we head on course on the GPS, we'll go on to autopilot. We'll just have a look at some of the other features of this GPS. We've got um, a couple of enhanced map pages. So we'll come back to that one. This is this is the first map page. Second one, it's added in the. If you can see that, let's see the plotting. The cursor functionality. So we could shift the map up. And I could centre the map on that screen, I'm not going to do that. Uh, second map page is a terrain page. So we've got colour co coded terrain. Then we've got traffic page. Obviously, I'm going to traffic around at the minute. Does that work with the zoom? Yeah. So that's, that's that. We've got a METAR. Set. So I've got I've dialed in Brisbane there because Brisbane's just to the south of us. Uh, we've got a METAR decode function as well, so in case you can't read METARs or you're too lazy. So that's switched on, you can turn that off. So just some uh, great features with this enhanced GPS. Uh, actually on the second map page, something else didn't show you. If we press enter. We've got weather radar. <laughs> We've got so it's a top-down view there, but um, we can switch to a vertical view and back to the map. And that legend can uh, toggle on and off as well. So I don't know, you know, to what extent that's I haven't tried that yet. To what extent that accurately portrays the weather but it's a pretty cool feature if you ask me all right we're at 2,000 feet now let's go on to altitude hold the Kabulcha is only um, I don't know, 
well, we're only two miles away, so <laughs> we're practically there. Uh, so again, if you're used to flying around Queensland, and uh, there's lots of, well, there were lots of nice Aussie, Aussie X strips around here, little ones. Uh, I've yet to see if any of those are represented in the same default scenery. So Caprunch is there right below us. I would guess some of this facility is modelled as part of the strip as well, part of the field. So we've got two grass strips it looks like. Uh, well, we've got some hard taxiways. I don't think any of the strips are, are hard. Uh, so if we just uh, dump the power, do a bit of a 360 towards the airport as we come down, just so we can. Um, Get a look at it. We're a bit low for that. So we're coming on, I think it's probably runway 24. Oh, that sets us up nicely. My trim wheel's in an awkward position here, so. That's my excuse for sloppiness. Plenty of space, so coming in a bit hot, a bit long. That's fine. Actually, it's not that long a runway, that's a displaced threshold from this end. So, um, so let's get off here and we'll check out the little extra cool thing that I spied. Not sure if you're supposed to taxi straight onto the grass here. That there is a de Havilland DHC-4. Caribou. This is pretty darn cool. Nicely modelled actually. Look at the flaps on that. <laughs> so obviously interested in that because it's a close relative of the Twin Otter. Um, DHC-6 is a Twin Otter of course. Not much similarity between them in real life, but the DHC-4 was de Havilland Canada's first twin, I believe. I think they built something under they built a twin under license. Can't remember what it was now before they built this, but they built this for the military. And then of course they built the DHC-5 Buffalo, which was a turboprop kind of upgrade of well, not the same aircraft, but a very similar aircraft with turboprop engines. So yeah, pretty damn cool, as close as we're going to get to a twin oscar and so Aerosoft gets his finger out. But this is a nicely modelled strip. It's a little bit, you can see it's gone a little bit choppy on the frames. Maybe you can't see, it's not really choppy, it's just you know you can detect it's come down a bit. But maybe that's to be expected. So yeah. I think we'll do a bit more flying in this area. We're going to investigate some of the Aussie X, um, well, the strips we know from Aussie X, and see if they're there. But that's all for today.